today we will discuss about Nipah virus. This is one of the common uh, zoonotic virus. It's mainly seen in Asia Pacific region. It's a RNA, RNA virus belong to paramyxovirus family and under the gene a hey, Nipah virus. Okay, we'll see what are the outbreaks which had occurred in the last century. The major outbreak was occurred in the uh, Malaysian uh, population and uh, it was among mainly pig farmers it was seen. The virus was named after the village in Malaysia where the infected patient lived. That was the name given for the Nipah. Since then, there have been multiple outbreaks in uh, Nipah encephalitis, various, various parts of uh, Malaysia and Bangladesh. And it was uh, seen in Siliguri in India, in uh, Southern and uh, Southern Philippines also it was seen. In May 2018, an outbreak was reported in Kerala state. And Nipah uh, nowadays uh, it is seen in uh, multiple parts of the Asia Pacific region. Last outbreak uh, which occurred in the Kerala was 2018 and uh, the, we'll now we will discuss about animal reservoirs. The major animal reservoir for Nipah virus is the uh, uh, bats. It comes under uh, genus uh, uh, Pteropus and it is otherwise called as fruit bats. And fruit bats are uh, mainly host for the Nipah virus. They, uh, uh, the virus grow in that uh, bat and uh, outbreaks can occur even in pigs also. Pigs uh, are the secondary host. Uh, horses, goats, sheep, cats, dogs all can be secondary host for the Nipah virus. But mainly it is uh, spreading from the fruit bat. The virus is highly contagious in pigs. That's why it was spread in uh, 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 pig farmers in Malaysia. And uh, we will see how human infection occur in Nipah virus. Normally it affects from the bats uh, or fruits to the uh, humans. From human to another human can be uh, transmitted through their uh, like saliva or secretions or uh, body fluids. From one person to another person can be spread through these type of uh, secretions and incubation period from uh, onset of infection to uh, disease is 7 to 40 days. So human normally it is human spread is not very common but rarely it can happen from one person to another person it can be spread through the secretions. Now we will see what are the clinical, uh, clinical features of Nipah virus. Nipah virus mainly affects the brain and uh, out of uh, 100 patients you can have 30 to 70 percent of the patients can have uh, high mortality because of encephalitis. Rarely other uh, features like respiratory, ARDS, all these things can be seen. Normally Nipah virus present like any other uh, viral infection, they can have fever, upper respiratory tract infection, myalgia, vomiting, sore throat, everything is like any other viral fever. But out of uh, 100 patients, uh, 30 to 70 patients can have encephalitis. That is a major problem in Nipah virus. Many patients with the Nipah can have acute encephalitis and some can have uh, ARDS like features. Now we will see how to diagnose a Nipah virus. Uh, we can uh, see IgM, ELISA or PCR to diagnose uh, Nipah virus. So these are the two investigations, IgM, ELISA and PCR can be done to di diagnose it. Treatment, uh, we should understand that this is a viral infection. The treatment is very limited to supportive care. Yeah, because uh, lip, Nipah encephalitis uh, is uh, uh, like once a patient develops Nipah encephalitis, there is a high chance for contaminating from that person to another person. So we should uh, use barrier nursing for the barrier nursing te technique for this uh, treating these patients. We use we should use N95 mask. We should use uh, gloves. Uh, proper hand care hygiene should be taken care. So all these things are important. Barrier nursing is very important when patient, treating the patient. Complete barrier uh, care is very, very important. Uh, use N95 mask. Uh, hand hygiene is very important. Use gloves. Uh, use proper gowns. Everything is important to prevent Nipah transmission. And we'll talk about uh, the drug which is uh, which is useful in uh, Nipah virus infection. That is Ribavirin. 
1000 microgram daily in two divided doses is the uh, dose uh, recommended uh, by uh, some authorities but WHO has not given any clear guidelines on uh, ribavirin dosage it was used in uh, Malaysian uh, outbreak previously this is uh, shown effective in uh, many patients but as a guideline it has not come but you can use tab ribavirin 1000 milligram daily in two, two divided doses that means 500 mg BD can be given and uh, any chance for immunization schedule passive immunization at present it is not available you cannot use any vaccine but it is under development for Nipah G glycoprotein that may come very soon so this can be given as a post exposure profile access at present it is not available so we have discussed about Nipah uh, disease it's a zoonotic virus it spreads from bats to human being through fruits and uh, very rarely it spread from one person to another person it can be spread from uh, sp spread from one person to another person through secretions uh, uh, patient can have encephalitis that is a major feature rarely patient can have other respiratory findings uh, patient should be treated with barrier nursing ribavirin has got a role in the management of uh, nipah virus thank you